Hello, so yesterday I showed that I found a new way to do the backlight mod for the DM20th and that is instead of using a PCB to turn the backlight on and off with a button hold or using uh, a switch to turn it on and off, I found that you can have it turn on and off with the screen and that creates, you know, that, that, that has some awesome advantages and has some drawbacks because this, obviously the when the screen's on, the backlight's gonna be on even though you don't need it to be. Um, but it also turns off and on and you have very little um, screen damage or, or shell damage um, because before with the switch mod, you had to make a hole in the side. And uh, I don't really like doing that because this was a Vega shell, so it's a custom shell. Um, so now you just have to kind of cut up some of the cut off some of the inside and you can't even see that um, you can see it a bit more on this one because I did it as a rough job but this one I used a Dremel and really you can't tell that much that it was anything was done um, I was just watching the video back um, and realized I didn't actually explain what I was talking about with cutting um, it's just this this piece this like wall here just has to be cut down like trimmed or dremeled out to where it's a bit flush with the screen or even lower. Um, I do it to where the screen is still held in a bit, so I do suggest that. Um, but that's what I was talking about. And uh, second, whenever I was showing this PCB, um, these these wires are, are opposite. So this is ground and this is positive. So don't get that mixed up. So you use a screen like this that comes in for, that, that's used for like a Raspberry Pi or Arduino and it usually comes on a PCB. Um, I don't have any of the, the starting materials because I, I don't, I've used these screens or for other projects like this one was for a Raspberry Pi handheld. Um, but what happens is that on the PCB, it's just connected with some tape and the ribbon cable. And you can just cut the ribbon cable off but to get the screen away from the PCB, you need to take something kind of sharp. I use this like iFixit um, tool and I just slide it down behind it, separating it. You need to keep the back paper intact as much as you can because if there's any like ripples, this isn't so bad, but if there's any ripples or, or, or breaks, you'll end up seeing it when, when the light's on, um, like any other speck of dirt as well. Um, but to do it, uh, they're just connected usually by like a little, the backlight itself is connected by like a little ribbon cable. And you just need to take that off. Um, and you can do that by just, uh, there's a piece of tape. By just taking your soldering iron and, uh, just get behind it. Heat it up a little bit and it just pops right off. So the backlight ribbon cable is now separated from the rest of the screen. And then you just kind of take the, the edge of it and pop the front screen off. Like so. And the backlight like this might be kind of stuck to the uh, main screen a bit more. Some of them come off real easily, but honestly, you can kind of just pull the ribbon cable a little bit to get it separated. I guess today it doesn't like me. Only when I'm doing a video do they not like me. Um, when doing this, uh, there we go. Um, make sure not to break this back um, piece because it's plastic and if it breaks you're going to see it it's just ruined at that point um, obviously I mean I was able to, to pull pretty hard and it came off um, so this is the actual screen this is the backlight with this um, you don't need this anymore you can just toss it away and then uh, yeah, let's just lay that right there 
And you can separate this from the plastic housing here. Um, usually these aren't needed. Sometimes they're needed, but most of the time they're not. Um, the screen that I'm gonna link is not needed. And you can just set this back on top or back on the back of it, of the thing. And there's the backlight, that's all it is. Um, and I'll go ahead and take this one apart to show you the next steps because I'm not gonna cut this one because I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. I might use it for a D3. So I'll take apart this one that I've done before. But you just take out the four screws because I know some people haven't done, don't like backlights because they're a little afraid of taking the it apart. Um, and it's really not hard. It's just eight screws and all. Unless you're taking out the battery, then it's nine. But you just take them out. You don't really have to be that nice about it. These things are made pretty resiliently. Just take it out. So this one's already modded, so you're gonna see the mod that I'm showing you, which is what I'm intending to do. But as you can tell, you can see that the wires just go to this component right here. I'll just go ahead and show you this before we get too far. That one's the far, the bottom of the far right capacitor from what I think it is. Um, and it's labeled C8. On the pin Z, this is also labeled C8 and it's further down here. Um, and it's right next to a jumper. Uh, it's the top part of that on that one. This one is the bottom. And this provides, I think four and a half volts um, and it turn and it provides it when the screen's on and and then stops providing power when the screen's off um, and then this is ground a resistor is added this is 15k um, if you have no resistor the screen is not visible if you have too high of a resistor then the backlight is too dim so I was trying to find a good mix and 15k seemed to still keep the screen bright enough to see at night well not too bright and the screen was very visible almost as if there was no backlight um, you can go higher, you can go a bit lower to like 10k, and I tried 6.8, and they were all visible. Um, 6.8 was on the low side, um, so I wouldn't really recommend it, I'd try and just go 15k. Um, other devices might be different, like I haven't tried the backlight mod on the Pin Z, so it might be, 15k might be too much or too little. And it's kind of one of those, you gotta play around with it kind of ca cases, and that's gonna be the case with every device. Um, because like the DMX's could be very similar to this, but they have Some of them have already bad screens. I'd expect the new US units to be about the same as this But that's the general idea for wiring it to the board um, Wiring it to this to the backlight It's just you got to figure like one of these is gonna be positive and negative. They don't usually label them so just wire it and kind of put it onto a battery and see which side it was positive and negative um, it's not going to ruin the screen by reversing the polarity it's just not going to turn on not the screen but the backlight um, and then yeah you just wire it to here I with the uh, with the resistors the way that I've been doing it is I'm using this ground pin at the top um, you can see it on this one it's just normally there's no solder there I just add a bit of solder and then I take the, the resistor and I end up, I take one side and I flipped it up and I cut it, I cut it short. This goes against that pin, that, that side. And then I just flip this over and this will go to the wire and I cut it short. And then I just solder it to that. I just put it up next to it, and solder. Um, and then to get those, the, the backlight kind of fitted in, you just need to, obviously you can see it's a bit big now. The length is about the same of this one, but it's a bit wide. I just cut it till it work, till it fits. Make sure not to cut off the, the LEDs. The screen I link isn't this one, um, but it's the same general idea. Uh, this one has probably too many lights, um, and I just cut one off in the end. Um, because it's just not really needed. Just two is fine. Um, and, but I just cut it down, keeping in mind that you need to use sharp scissors because you don't want to crack this still. A little bit of cracking is fine, but you don't want it to where, where it's visible. Um, and then you just lay it down with the, uh, you can use the, the, the back, the 
background as well. I, in this case, I used some cellophane tape or um, thermal tape or whatever it's called. And I just taped it to the back. On another one, like this one, I used double-sided tape and uh, just taped it, put it down and then put the back on it, the back reflective on it. And that ended up holding it in better and you don't have all this tape there. And then really, after that, you just kinda put it in. Once you to make sure that it's not getting on, uh, no, not under the wires, not putting too much pressure. Um, you're probably gonna wonder what to do with uh, this. Depending on the backlight you use, you can put it back in. Um, like this one doesn't have it, but another one of mine does still have this in there because the backlight is thin enough. Um, this one doesn't. Um, I would, you can leave it out as long as everything is not really moving around and, and it's not really that big of a deal. It's mainly there just for keeping the background in place, but these backlights are much thicker that they're not really in. They kind of sit in snugly if you cut it right, so they don't really need it. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives the general idea of how to do this mod. Um, I'll try to make a better one whenever I have the parts again and do a full, full build. Um, but hopefully this helps.